So you want to be a guitar YouTuber? I bet I can change your mind about that today, right here on Geargasms. Hi kids, welcome to Geargasms. I'm your host, Alan Barnes. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. But today we have part five, the final episode in So You Want to Be a Guitar YouTuber. In previous episodes, we talked about all kinds of things. We talked about picking what kind of content you're going to do, evaluating your strengths. We talked about branding, coming up with a logo, shooting videos, lights, camera, and audio, how to frame shots, how to structure your video. We talked about the three T's, thumbnails, titles, and tags, and a whole range of topics having to do with making guitar videos. So if you're still here at episode five, you must be one really, really determined some bitch. The last piece that we're going to talk about are the three A's, the algorithm, analytics, and ads. Now when we get to that final piece, stay to the very end of the video because I'm going to broach a topic that is super, super verboten, verboten on YouTube, and I'm going to talk about money. That's something you're never going to hear any other YouTuber talk about. They're super cagey about that. They'll flim, they'll flam. I don't know, kind of, uh, I make-ish. They won't talk about dollars. I'm going to show you actual dollars and cents so you can get an idea of just how fantastically rich you can become by being a guitar YouTuber. So without further delay, let's get right into the first segment, which is analytics. Now, YouTube gives its creators a tremendous amount of analytics. And I tell you, kids, I'm a data guy in my main profession, so I love this. You can spend so much time hovering over these numbers that it'll make you crazy. So I'm going to take you through just a top-level view of some of these things that I find useful. So when you get to the main page, you get just what is a dashboard. But if you look... You can see right here that your top videos over the last 20 days, you can see what they are, how many views they're getting. You have a real-time updating live activity view, which shows you your top five videos over the last 48 hours. That's also helpful. Now you can click into your top videos and it will show you a dazzling, dizzying array of graphs. This is really busy and not useful at all to me. But one of the things that is super useful right here is traffic sources. My number one feed, YouTube search. That means that people are finding my content after performing a search directly on YouTube. Now down here, suggested videos. This is the gold standard of traffic sources. Those are videos that the much legendary, mysterious YouTube algorithm has picked up. That's the number that you really want to see if you can push higher. But here's the catch. That's the number that you cannot push higher through any mere mortal act. Browse features, I'm not really sure. Let's hover over it. Traffic from the home page, home screen, the subscription feed, or other. So in my case, it's probably subscribers. Viewer age, we can see that my viewers are relatively half my age or so. Obviously, people who are older than me, they don't do YouTube. That's no surprise. We ignore them. So now that we've discussed that topic, we're going to go right into the, the most important part of analytics, and that's the audience retention numbers. Many times we're all befuddled. Why don't people like my videos? We don't have an answer as to why they're not clicking on them. But once they do, unlike all your friends and family, they're going to tell you exactly what they don't like about the video and what they do. And it's very specific. So hang on to your hats because this is a super important segment. All right, we're still in analytics. When you get into the individual analytics of a video, this too can be very instructive. You have all the same kinds of metrics that you have there. You can see your likes and dislikes. You can see where your traffic sources are. But the main thing I look at in here is audience retention. And you see that graph? Doesn't that look ugly? This is where people start your video. And this line shows as you get towards the end, how few people are left at the very end. Put your begging up front. When you're begging for subscribers, you're begging for money, you're begging for Patreon, you better put that baby pretty quickly in there because if you look, 
about a minute and 40 in, we've lost half the audience already on a 15 minute video. And the way I use this graph is this really helps you dis discover what people like and don't like. You would think this thing would go down and continue to go down. How can it be down to 14% and then now 21% are watching? How can more people be watching here than we're watching here? But what these little bumps mean is these are places where people actually went back and watched it again. That's what bumps those numbers up. So when you see little nipples like that sticking up, those are happy little moments. And that's where you want to click in and looky there. That tells me that was a first bump. And all right, looks like I'm playing in that. Let's go back to where it's sucking. Oh, people didn't really like the B-roll look at the guitar as I'm getting away from it. It goes way up because they want to hear you play. It's a music channel. Find the dip and what's going on there. All right, here's the dip. What's going on right here is I'm telling people about my colonoscopy with a green screen shot of an actual colonoscopy or at least a computer generated version of one. I thought it was pretty funny. Apparently people didn't like it. So that's the kind of thing you can learn from your video. You can see where these little bumps are and you can see that in most of the videos when I go in and I look for those bumps they generally in guitar videos will center around playing this like oh that's the moment I got back to actually playing whatever it is I'm talking about in the video and I stopped running my damn mouth so much that is what is really gonna teach you how to make better content because these creator coaches will say make better content make better content and you're like well how am I supposed to do that what do people want to see that graph right there does not lie. That will tell you what's what's working and what's not. Whatever you find that's working, do more of that. What's not working, do less. Okay, so now we get into the forbidden fruit. We're going to talk about money. The first part of the money we're going to talk about is money out. How much do you want to spend? Believe it or not, when you start almost any other business, you do have to spend a little bit of money advertising your product your service whatever that is and YouTube is no different there are a number of ways that you can promote your channel that are absolutely free you can do so on social media particularly Facebook is a good place if you get actively involved in guitar communities and share your videos there but the key word is actively involved don't be that douchebag that just rolls into the group drops a video a couple of times a week begs people to subscribe and leave in order to make a real connection within those groups, you have to form a real connection. That means actively participate in the discussions. But beyond that, you may think, hey, is it a good idea to do something with Google Ads? Two kinds of Google Ads. Google AdSense is money in. Google Ads is money out. So I'm going to take into the pros and cons of spending money promoting your channel. All right, we just talked about ways to promote your video, including social media. Google Ads is money out. That's money that you pay to Google to promote your video or your channel. And let me tell you, it is poison. And you could spend very, very little money and see some very, very good traffic. You can take a video that's completely at the bed, but looky here at this graph. This was one I did a bunch of months ago because as you can see the blue line is your audience retention that's the organic these are people that just are normal watchers this here orange one that's display ads this means that these were people that were driven to your video from an ad from Google and look what happens eight seconds in you've lost two-thirds of them 97 percent of the people are only gonna watch the first minute that's not gonna get you squat doodly it's not gonna get you watch time it's going to destroy the average percentage viewed. Most of my videos that are fairly successful are up in the 30s. I have some in the 40s and 50s. This guy is 16.4 and let me tell you something right after I ran the ad it was way less than that. You can take a number that's normally 35 percent and run an ad on something and you go back in and look at it and it'll take it down to three four percent average percentage viewed that's not good in a number of ways. Number one, not only does not not get you subscribers, it doesn't get you return viewers, but the algorithm sees that and they see all that traffic coming to it and clicking off and the algorithm says this video is garbage and we're not going to suggest it. 
if you want to use a Google ad I would recommend that you make a channel trailer that's specifically a short under two minute commercial for your channel maybe run a Google ad for that to drive some traffic you do get some subscribers out of it the couple times that I did it I got three four eight ten whatever you know you get a couple of small handfuls now to wrap it all up we're gonna get into the thing that no one ever talks about and that's revenue how much money are you gonna make if you get a thousand views and you're running ads on your channel what kind of money is that people have no idea other youtubers they won't talk about it they won't specifically talk about it they won't show you their exact dollars that they're making so you can sort of relate that to this is how many views they're getting this is how much money they're making not sure why that is but I'm gonna bear all like I always have on this channel and I'm gonna show you very specifically my mad fat stacks cash and where it's coming from this is something no youtuber is ever gonna tell you on their channel I'm gonna do it probably for the first time in YouTube history here everybody is coy about their revenue now there's different revenue sources you can get AdSense which is YouTube money in those are ads that are shown on your channel right there last 30 days look at what Geargasms has made eight dollars and 85 cents that ain't a whole lot of money kids and you're thinking well you're garbage of course you ain't making any money when I started my YouTube channel I didn't monetize right away and in fact YouTube prevents you from monetizing right away because you have to have I think a minimum of thousand subscribers it was only a couple of months ago I decided to monetize and in YouTube language that means you allow AdSense ads to be placed on your content across a 90 day span getting almost 50,000 views and I know you little channels out there think wow that's a whole hell of a lot and that's good you make twenty seven dollars and thirty two cents so you figure right now I'm averaging my revenues like nine dollars a month now as those numbers go up obviously that'll go up as you could see lifetime I've had monetized playbacks at thirteen thousand that's nowhere near the total views the reason that is is sometimes they don't put ads they don't put ads every time somebody watches one of your videos they don't put an ad and as you can see I've made almost thirty dollars I'm not trying to make y'all feel bad because I'm rich and you're not, but I got $30 and you ain't. So there you have it. That's the, the wild fortunes that can be obtained by making YouTube guitar videos. You could see I'm getting super, super filthy rich doing this. I don't want you to be jealous about that. I want you to be inspired. Now, after watching all five episodes, what I really would like to see from you guys if you do have a YouTube channel or you're starting one but I'm really really interested to hear what part of these videos helped you level up your content what didn't work for you the things you tried I would love to see some of your before and after stuff because I really really think this five-part series is going to be a great resource and to help you avoid a lot of the pain and the pitfalls that I endured during my first year on YouTube I would love it if you would subscribe. Subscribers are always great. Hit the like button. That helps other viewers find the videos here on Geargasms. As always, I thank you for your time. And whatever you do, I hope to see you here next week on Geargasms.